guys have sold a bazillion records, and uh, they've only been like in the music business for, I don't know, 25 years. John Bon Jovi, Richie Sambora. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Ah. Oh, this is so cool. Thank you. Is this Blaine? Yes, this is. And you know what's cool about this, guys? I thought I was, I was, I'm getting two for the price of one. Right on. There you go, baby. There's so many things I want to talk to you guys about. Um, the new album is called The Circle. Yeah. And the band is coming to town March 17th for St. Patrick's Day. I can't tell you how excited we are here in Detroit to have you guys come to town on St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. It's going to be so cool. Yeah. yeah always we always look forward to playing Detroit, man. It's been a great city for us. Yeah. Richie, you were on Extra recently, and um, they asked you what the key to your longevity was. You want to share with everyone what you said? Yes, I did. I was just making a joke, and I said Viagra. <laughs> That was pretty solid, Richie. No, well, you know, it was just a joke, you know. I mean, you know, the longevity of this band, obviously, uh, there's so so many components to that question. Uh, you know, us getting along really well and having fun and making relevant music. And, uh, you know, all the fans out there still want to come and see us and still uh, receive our music. And uh, we're communicating through our music. So, I mean, that's where that's where it really is the longevity of the band. Uh, John, there's a, there's a blurb on your website talking about the circle and uh, they say it's the re-emergence of Richie Sambora and you guys are sitting right there together yeah um, you say something like it's really great having Richie back I can't tell you how much that's meant with me and Richie one and one makes three he's on fire why do you say that well it really sums it up I mean Richie went through a difficult time it's you know it's pretty public knowledge at right. this point and uh, his focus is really back on his life and his family and his band and uh, when we're at the peak of our game you know we, we've we've written a couple songs you know <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think we've really outdid out it this time I think we've really written a career making record one of the uh, songs on this album I think will relate to a lot of people here in Detroit considering what we've been going through for the last few years yeah Work for the Working Man. You tell betcha. us, tell us about that, John. Well, it, this one specifically. Now, of course, we're all aware of what's happened with the Big Three in Detroit and the eco economic downturn. But specifically, this was about a story in Ohio that I witnessed uh, when DHL pulled out of town, and yet all these able-bodied, hard-working American people who were counting on those jobs as were their families, and the industry tumbled, and uh, and everybody was caught, you know, by surprise, and really doesn't don't know what they're going to do. But it doesn't mean that, you know, the rest of us aren't feeling their pain and supporting them. Uh, this lady told the story in the first person and said the, the worst thing that happened is when they walked them to the gate and took their ID badge and they lost their pension. And these were her friends and these were, the sh you know, this was their dreams to work there uh, and to be company people. And it, it's really affected uh, the whole nation, everybody's very aware of the, the the plight of the working man, both in Detroit and Ohio and anywhere else where we've lost jobs. Right. John Bon Jovi, Richie Sambora, our very special guests on 96.3 WDVD. Just to give you an idea of how successful this band is, I mean, we're all big fans. They've played over 3,000 shows, over 32 million fans, and they rocked them all, by the way. Mm. Um John, you were what, 16 when you went, were working at the power station on a demo. Uh, do you ever look back and think, wow, the 16 year old version of John's got to be looking at the, what, 40 ver year old version of John going, amazing? Well, who would have ever thought? You know, I mean, I, I never looked this far down the road as a, as a kid, um, writing those things as a boy. Every kid who plays guitar in his bedroom in front of a mirror uh, thinks they're going to make records, but nobody ever dreams about making records 25, 27 years later. Uh, so we feel very privileged. It shows because every time I've seen you, I've seen you guys about four times, and I always get the impression that you guys are really soaking in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, you try to every night. I mean, that's the thing. You, you try to give your spirit to the fans every every night you possibly can, you know? So uh, uh, we actually have a documentary that's coming out, and that kind of lets you in about some of that stuff that goes on behind the curtain and behind the scenes and uh, what actually, what how much we do give. And Richie, I mean, uh, you've been pretty uh, for, forthcoming about the you know the challenges that you've had these last few years. Uh, what was it like to have somebody like John, like the other guys in the band, uh, to lean on like that? I mean, how did they help you out? Oh, come on. 
I mean, you know, it, it's just by being honest. And, uh, you know, that's the thing about this, this band is an anomaly. Everybody, it's a band of brotherhood and uh, everybody helps each other. If anybody gets in trouble, we pick each other up. And you know what? I was a little broken and the guys, uh, you know, put some bandages on me and fix me up. And, uh, you know, that's going back now about two and a half years, you know. So it's, it's, uh, um, it's been a long time and, it, and it's got a happy ending. So everything is just fantastic. And the guys, between the guys and my family, you know, every, everything really worked out great. John, I got a little bit of a bone to pick with you. Why is that? Well, a couple years ago, you guys were at the Palace, and, and we had like a Battle of the Bands contest for a band to open for you, right. which was cool. And, and for doing that, um, I, I was the MC for that that night. And I then, remember. Yeah, and then I got, to, I got to sit in the front row. And by the way, I want to tell you guys, one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life, front row for Bon Jovi, the only time I've ever been front row. But John, the bone I have to pick with you is, dude, you were hitting on my wife. You pointed at her at some point. Yeah, but I've stopped calling her. <laughs> hey, hold on. Was that the redhead? Yes. Yes, it was. I remember. There you go. See? Colleen. <laughs> yes, Colleen. See? I've stopped calling. <laughs> well, I appreciate that you've stopped calling. Now we just text. <laughs> <laughs> we tweet. <laughs> Tweeting. <laughs> John and Richie from Bon Jovi uh, coming to town March 17th, Palace of Auburn Hills. And the new album, The Circle, comes out on my birthday, right November on. 10th. We will toast your birthday, my friend. Absolutely. Happy birthday to you, my friend. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate it. All right, bye-bye. All right, take care. That's John and Richie from Bon Jovi, 96.3 WDB.